And right now is Senate Foreign Relations Committee member, Texas Senator Ted Cruz. Senator, good to see you this weekend. Thank you for joining us. How would you assess the war today? Well, Maria, it's good to be with you. Uh, this war is going to unfortunately be prolonged, uh, and it's going to be bloody. Uh, it started late Friday night with what became the worst attack on Israel in over 50 years. Saturday was the largest single-day murder of Jews since the Holocaust. We've seen over 1,200 Israelis murdered by Hamas terrorists. We've seen 27 Americans confirmed murdered by Hamas terrorists. And these terrorists, th th these are not incidental casualties. These were the targets, these death squads. They went house to house, murdering, exterminating every person in the house, targeting elderly people, targeting women and children, brutally raping women and little girls, decapitating infants. What we're seeing, Maria, with these Hamas terrorists, it is evil. And, and, and let me say at the outset that everyone should understand there is no justification, there is no rationalization. Every far left Democrat, every campus radical that is trying to justify these atrocities, they're justifying war crimes. This is horrific. And Israel is entirely within its rights to be waging this war, and, and, and Prime Minister Netanyahu has made clear the objective of this war is to eliminate Hamas, to go in and eliminate, to take out their military leadership, to take out their weapons, to take out their terrorists. And that is a cause that is right, that is just, that is right for Israel, but it's right for America. Look, this was not just the worst attack on Israel in 50 years, Israel's 9-11. 27 Americans murdered upwards of a dozen or more Americans as hostages. This is one of the worst terrorist attacks on America in our history, and Hamas has consistently waged war, and, and America and Israel should stand united in saying no more. I guess what I want to know from you is, do you feel confident that Israel can, in fact, wipe away Hamas? Because let's not forget, we're hearing reports that Hezbollah has 100,000 rockets, and they are ready to ramp up uh, and side with Hamas against Israel. So do you feel a confidence that Israel can, in fact, be successful? Absolutely, yes. And, and remember, Hamas is a proxy for Iran. Hezbollah is a proxy for Iran. Both are directed by Iran. Both are funded by Iran. Both are controlled by Iran. This attack was planned by Iran. It was funded by Iran. It was directed by Iran. And, and Israel is resolved. Look, Israel exists only because it is strong enough to defeat its enemies. That's why Israel exists. And I'll tell you what Hamas's strategy is. They are counting on left-wing Democrats and the useful idiots in the corporate media to be their biggest ally. Because as Israel mounts this ground offensive, goes to defeat Hamas, one of the tragic consequences we know we're going to see Palestinian civilian casualties. The reason we know that is Hamas wants Palestinian civilian casualties. Hamas uses Palestinian civilians as human shields. Back in 2014, which was the last major rocket assault by Hamas on Israel, I authored a bipartisan resolution in the Senate with Kirsten Gillibrand, Democrat from New York, condemning Hamas's use of human shields as a war crime. This is something they do systematically. As you yeah. noted, Israel is trying, going to extraordinary lengths to tell Palestinian civilians to get out of harm's way. There is no That's military right. on planet Earth that does more to avoid civilian deaths. But Hamas wants Palestinian civilians. They want women and children killed because they'll then point to the bodies and count on, on the marionettes in the media to immediately begin denouncing Israel. That's part of their war plan is to undermine Israel. And so it is incumbent yeah. on, on, on the rest of us to tell the truth and not fall victim for that propaganda game that is part of their war plan. How would you assess the U.S.'s response? I know next week you've got a hearing of Jack Lew. Uh, Joe Biden wants him to be the ambassador to Israel. We don't even have an ambassador. Is that going to make a difference? 
Well, look, it would be good to have an ambassador. I, I would note Democrats have been screaming at Republicans that we don't have an ambassador to Israel. That is entirely the fault of Democrats because they never scheduled a hearing for him. The Democrats control the Foreign Relations Committee. It is 100 percent within the control. It was Bob Menendez who was the chairman. He's since been indicted. He's had to step down. They've now finally scheduled a hearing, but they're screaming at Republicans for the fact that Democrats wouldn't schedule a hearing on the guy when they mm. co control that entirely. Let me say more broadly, you asked about the administration's response. We've listened to Biden State Department officials lecturing Israel about the need to follow international law and, and to wage the war consistent with the rule of law. What the hell are they suggesting? This White House undermines Israel on a daily basis. And I'll tell you uh, what next week the debate yeah. should be about, not about their delay to put forth an ambassador to Israel. Next week, the debate in the Senate should be about cutting off all of the funding for Iran. There's been a lot of focus on the $6 billion ransom yeah. that the Biden administration was trying to pay. But the Biden administration has, has allowed over $50 billion to flow to Iran. $6 billion in ransom, $10 billion that they sent three weeks earlier, and over $40 billion in revenues because the Biden administration will not enforce oil sanctions, we need to immediately enforce those sanctions and cut off every single penny that is flowing yeah. to Iran that is funding this terrorist attack. Well, you make so many good points, and you didn't even mention Biden's chief negotiator in the uh, Iran nuclear deal, Robert Malley. Yeah apparently facilitated the penetration of an Iranian spy ring into the highest national security levels of the U.S. government. But I want to switch gears yes. and ask you about our own border, because there are growing concerns yeah. about the southern border and our national security because of this wide open border policy. Border Control now says that they took two men into custody custody from Lebanon, who were crossing the southern border on Thursday. We've got new data which leaked from inside Border Patrol. It shows in just the past two years, thousands of special interest aliens have illegally crossed into America from countries identified by the United States as countries promoting or protecting terrorism. That includes several from the Middle East. We're looking at the numbers right now. 30,000 from Turkey, uh, another 6,000 from Afghanistan, 3,000 from Egypt. The list is long here. Senator, these numbers do not take into account the more than one and a half million gotaways. They have slipped through our countries uh, uh, under Biden's watch because of this wide open border. How worried are you about Ma this? Ma Maria, you, you, you are exactly right. I, I am very sorry to say I think the risk of a major terrorist attack in the United States is higher today than it has been at any time since September 11th, 2001. And it's a combination, number one, of Biden's disastrous foreign policy that has produced the, 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 the biggest war in the Middle East and the, and the most significant attack on Israel in 50 years. That combined with Biden's open borders, and that open borders exists with the acquiescence and support of every single congressional Democrat. And if you're a terrorist, if you're coming here to commit a terrorist act, you want to be a gotaway, and nobody is watching, nobody is, is on guard in this administration because Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and Alejandro Mayorkas are more concerned with partisan politics than with their solemn obligation to keep Americans safe. And so I would encourage everyone right now, be vigilant, be vigilant watch, be, because these are, are dangerous and, per and perilous times. Very dangerous. Uh, and you called it a long time ago by your pointing out uh, the impact of this wide open border. Senator, thank you. We will be watching all of that. Ted Cruz joining us this weekend.